Okay, everyone, so we need to uh, now go through the process of actually creating an app store listing. So I've got my, um, my account open, and I notice that when I, when I teach this, because we go into it in depth, at a certain point, it logs me out due to inactivity. So I took a moment to log out and log in just to reset it. I, I don't know if that'll happen to you, but it's happened to me in the middle of a lecture. So I've logged out and logged in. Good thing I wrote down my password. And so here I, I'm back on my dashboard. Um, there's multiple ways to get here. Under the dashboard is one way, add a new app on the bottom right. But also under the screen, apps and services, this is what focuses on your app. And notice when I go to apps and services, I have all of these subsections, a list of my apps, app testing service. They can test your app for you to, um, uh, to see if it's fully compatible and all of that. I've got A-B testing. Basically, A-B testing is to check different versions of your app. Does version A work better for users? Does version B? It'll then give you feedback, and you'll see, okay, it does work better if I make my app this way. So if I have two different versions of my app to do this testing, I can do A-B testing. I can go into the game circle section and set this up <coughs> for leaderboards and all of that. If I were to have made a game and people earn points and all of that, I can set it up with that, that people then compete with each other advertising your app, putting mobile ads. Remember, that's another way to make money off your project. But before we get to all of that, we need an app. On the bottom right corner, if you click Add a New App, uh, it'll ask you, okay, are you uploading an Android app, a mobile web app, or an app for PC or Mac? So via Amazon, we can reach all of those platforms. Notice we don't see iPhones. We still have to publish an app for iOS devices through the iTunes store. For Android, we are able to reach people via Google Play or Amazon App Store. This will be an Android app. I'll click Next. Uh, to start off here, I have a few things I need to fill in. What's the app title required? So the way we'll do this is um, everyone's using the same app, but everyone's got a different name. So I'm going to say, put your last name and then the name of your app. I suppose we could leave them all the same name, my SDCE, because we've all got a unique app ID. But as I had mentioned, I, I believe I mentioned for this class, that you are able to see the apps from previous students if you search my SDCE on Amazon, you will see the apps of previous students. So uh, everyone's got their version of the app. Um, and so whatever you want to call this thing, and I'm doing it like this, app SKU, optional. SKU is a stock keeping unit. This is just a, an internal code number of what your app is. If I'm selling a bunch of different apps and I've got, you know, QuickBooks or something where I'm keeping track of my sales, this is a, a, an internal thing for me to keep track of it. So this is, this is like, you know, app 01. It's optional. I'm not going to fill it in. I only have one app. But if I have multiple apps that I'm working with, this is how I keep track of them internally. Category. We have a bunch to choose from, and uh, we should put in our app into the right one so that people can find our app. There's you know, millions of apps here, so to help us get found, we will see various things we need to do. Based on all of these that are here, perhaps education is the one that I want to choose. Maybe even local, because it's about a local college. Productivity, maybe? You can learn something productive. This can be changed, of course. I want to choose education. Category refinement. Uh, these will help users find your app. So what do we have? I'm 
none of these really fit further, I guess. So I don't, I don't have to fill any more. But if uh, any of these made sense, I would select them. Customer contact, customer support contact. Use my default. So when we first set up the account, it asked us for an email, a phone, and a website. And if I had set those up, I would then leave this on, and it would automatically use those. Here they are required. So I don't think it'll let me proceed if I don't fill these in because they seem to be required. So I'll just make them up. Oh, I guess it did let me. Okay. So I'm going to proceed. That's one of six things I need to do in order to get this app to people. They are within these tabs, one of six complete. I need to get a green check mark on all of these before my app can be uploaded. We'll look at them all, of course. Um, we already filled in one of the items, one of the tabs here. If I need to change anything, I can easily go back and then edit. Mine says, your app may be eligible for paid ad campaign. So I can pay Amazon to have more people find my app and maybe prof make the profit back from it elsewhere. elsewhere. I'll go to availability and pricing. And here I have to decide, OK, I have the ways of making money, the standard ways, and the underground. Amazon Underground. Um, Amazon Underground takes a bit more steps than I want to get into at this point, so you can look into it on your own, read the documentation. I'm going to leave it as a standard app, and from the standard then it asks, will your app be available for everyone? Yes or no? Then you have to select which particular countries you're targeting. I would leave the default and everyone in the world more than 200 countries could have access to your app. Not that it'll translate your app to other uh, languages, but uh, you'll, you'll be available at least. Are you charging, yes or no? Uh, if you select yes, and you start to then add these, these costs, um, so if I'm saying US dollar, Yes, my list price is, you know, one dollar. It'll then calculate it. Though that's zero point seventy-seven pounds, and that's point nine euro, and that's three uh, point fifteen Brazilian units, dollar thirty-one Canadian, etc. It says uh, the price is listed here, and um, I think it says that once you set these prices, you cannot unset them. This app, for its testing purposes, so I'll have it free. But here I can easily set my prices. And unfortunately, we've built a culture that people, even at 99 cents, sometimes people think that's too much. You've got this great app you built, and at 99 cents, people are still not going to buy it. And we've come from a time when we were buying software for, you know, $50, $100, $500, and now apps are 99 cents. And even at that cost, sometimes people balk at that. So that's why that in-app purchase might work, or ads might work. Okay, give the app away for free, but if they click on ads, I profit from that. Has this app already been released, yes or no? No, this is the first time we're releasing it. If it has, then we would say where else it was released. When would you like? To release this. We can schedule this. If we have a certain release date in mind, I can set it. I don't have a release date in mind. I want it up available as soon as I've filled in all six tabs. So everything looks good here. I'll click Save. I'll go over to Description. There, there are several versions of the description that I can set up, but it does not automatically do it for me. I can, I'm going to fill in the English version 
And if I want a version in Spanish or Japanese, I have to provide it. It will not give a translation for me. So be careful here. It makes it seem like if I'm, I'm going to write in all of these items and then I'll click Save. No, you don't want to click this Save and Add Translation. You want to click this Save on the bottom corner. If you click the second Save, it'll say you've saved the English version, now save another language version. Display name, that's the name that I'm going to have up there. Short description, up to 1,200 characters. Long, up to 4,000. Bullet points of some features, three to five of them, and some keywords. So this is all for helping me to get found. If you take my other classes, not only do I teach this Android class, but I teach a bunch of web marketing classes like social media, SEO, uh, web design. In all those other classes, we spend a lot of time talking about keywords and how to get found and what helps you stand out. So the short description in about 1,200 characters, I have to convince people, why would you download my app? This is just our testing app, but I would write something like the unofficial San Diego Continuing Education app. Use this app to learn all about. Again, you know, we've got to sell it. Think in, in the terms of a marketer or, or you know, a salesman about what's our product and how do I get you to download it. Use this app to learn about all the great apps we offer. This doesn't have to be real, of course. We offer to further your education. <coughs> I would write a longer version. Uh, nowadays, distance education is the way to make to get ahead. Whatever. I'm going to think in terms about what is it going. What is going to entice people to download the app? I'm obviously not going to make things up, and some little bit of exaggeration is okay, but you don't want to promise much more than what your app can deliver. Bullet points, three to five of them. I'm going to say, uh, let's say, look up classes, get directions to campus, save your class list. Those are some of the things that our app does at the moment. Later on, we'll have more features in the 2.0 release, such as social sharing and such. So we'll get to that later. Keywords is just saying it's optional, but I would recommend to make it required. Search terms are used to increase the discoverability. People are searching for apps. If you put in keywords, it can help you get your apps found. Uh, so I can write education, comma, college classes, art, computers, whatever comes to mind, keywords of what people could be searching for, what our app features. This can be changed whenever we want, of course. When you want to save, not save and add translation, regular save, unless you can translate all of these items to another language. Save. I have three out of six checks. Images and multimedia we're going to need to skip for today. This is a pretty involved screen that we need to spend some time on. This is going to require a lot of store assets. This is going to require icons to show off your app in a variety of sizes. This is going to require screenshots to show people what does your app look like. Optional video to show off you using your app. Um, just a lot of assets that we don't have time to get to today. We'll do it next time. So I'm going to skip images for the moment. Content rating subject matter. Moderate or strong usage of all of these items. I have to go in then and, and say my app uses these various things to these various degrees. Is there violence in our app? 
No. Cartoon violence? No. Drug use? No. Nudity? No. Sex? No. Intolerance? No. Profanity? Heck no. Academic. Is our app academic? Yes, to some degree. This is a little er open interpretation. We're not actually teaching anyone directly in our app, but it's about education. I don't believe there's a wrong answer here, but maybe to err on the side of caution. It is related to education. It's academic. Additional info. Account creation or other personal information collected? Yes or no? Don't we ask for the user to put in their name? It's optional, but we ask the person. Customize the app. We're asking for their name. Again, erring on the side of caution, perhaps. We are asking account creation or other personal info collected. Yeah, their name. Ads. No, we haven't added any ads. Is your app directed primarily to kids under age 13? No, you can't even attend this college unless you're at least 18. Is there any gambling? No. Location detection or location-based services? Yes or no? Don't we have a map that gives people directions to campus? That's location-based. It creates, it checks a map where the person is at. Yes. User-generated content or user-to-user -user communication? Yes or no? Yes, the user is generating something. They are saving a list of classes. We set it up that they're saving their class list. We could add an extra field for notes. The person could save notes about a class. It's user-generated content. And lastly, a requirement. Privacy policy. Required if app collects personal info. We had set up here that yes, personal info, if we had said no, not required, but erring on the side of caution, this is saying uh, this is going to need some sort of um, address where you have some basic disclaimer online about the data being collected. Uh, what you could do is app Privacy policy generator, app privacy policy template. You could do a search for these. And somewhere you get some result. And then you have to have a link to it. Again, that goes back to having a website, the investment in, in that infrastructure. Mobile privacy policy, privacy policy for iOS apps, template guide, that might sound good. I'm gonna, I haven't seen it. I'm going to take a quick look. Welcome. This answers questions. Privacy policy for Android. Is this free or not? In short, User generator. So you can go in, get these. For the moment, I'll make it up. Because I don't really have anything to show, and it's just a testing app. I would save that screen. Uh, four out of six. Let's go then to the binary files tab. A lot of little things to fill in, but the most important thing is um, well, this is apply Amazon DRM, protect your app from unauthorized use. Without DRM, your app can be used without restriction by any user. This is up to you to decide. Yes, it's recommended, but this means basically they will encrypt your app so that it's only used properly through the proper channels. If you don't uh, want that or it doesn't matter, you can leave it off. I'll leave it on. 
app certification hashes, that's just unique fingerprint stuff, don't worry about that. Binary file. So if your app is bigger than 150 megabytes, you have to upload it via secure FTP. Ours is tiny, it's like one megabyte. So I'm going to choose to click upload binary and the, my, my APK file, my release ready APK file is what I will upload. It'll be uploaded. It'll then scan it a bit to look at its config XML file, for example. It says right here. It says if it's above 150. If it's above 150. Now, whoops! Here I'm trying to upload a package, smith.mysdce. So this is what I'm saying. You will be stymied at that point if you've been using your config XML file that still has that name that everyone's using. I thought I changed it, but um, I mean, I'm going to need to rerun my, my build process in a moment. But it'll upload, and then it'll give you a bunch of info that, it'll, that it says, here's your APK, here's your package ID, we see all of this stuff. Your app is compatible with all these devices. It might not be compatible with these, whatever, but it'll be compatible with hundreds of devices, most likely, under device support. Language, well, it's in English, so I, I would leave that if I had multiple translations. I can use Cordova to create multiple translations to my app, and then I could select them here. Export compliance, there's only one thing to check, and you have to check it. And basically you're saying here that the app that you're creating um, can be imported and exported, and it's in full compliance of applicable laws regarding encryption technology. Encryption technology is on par with weaponry, actually, that there are regulations for transporting between nations. So if your app is about encryption technology or uses encryption technology, I think you have to certify that it's legal for you to be transporting it through the world. So you have to turn that on. Now it's on apps, Maps Redirection. If you're using the Google Map, it will use the Amazon version of it. That's fine. Binary alias. This can be anything, but I like to use the same name as the APK file. And if you need to if you need to uh, give the Amazon people some special testing instructions, you can fill that in in that box. So I'm going to need to republish my app for distribution in, in a moment. But once you fill all of that in, you, you're going to save that. You're going to get the fifth check mark. This is as far as we'll be able to go at the moment because we need to spend quite a bit of time next time to set up our images in multimedia. So we're seeing here we're getting closer and closer to publishing a real app via Amazon. Very similar process over on Google Play. You're welcome to, on your own, when you go home, go to developer.android.com and go to the developer console and go through the process and check it out. Again, it'll tell you that you need to pay for the account, $28, and then you'll start to be able to upload your app the same way as this. Um, we're going to end the main lecture in just a moment, but any questions at this point? You mentioned something about writing instructions on how to test the app. Can you elaborate on that a little bit more? This is instructions that we're going to give to Amazon in case your app, I don't have really have any use case scenarios, but in case your app needs to be tested on a specific version of Android, I suppose, we could tell Amazon this is optimized for Android 4.1, test it on that. Just instructions to give the Amazon people here ways that to test your app. But again.
again, use case scenarios, I can't really think of it, our app should be universal, accessible by everyone. <coughs> Um, so that's it for the moment. Uh, we'll do some lab time. Um, again, at this point, you should have your version of the app because notice what happened when I tried to upload the one we're all using. So my code, I'll put a copy of my code into the folder, but you have to remember to change your config XML file to have your unique ID. And we'll finish at this point. When we come back next time, we'll finish our listing. We'll actually publish it. We'll see that it's a real app. You'll still start to be able to show your friends and family, I got a real app online. Download it. And then we'll start to talk about releasing a version 2 of it with more features. We'll get back to coding. We'll add more features, emailing features, social sharing features, etc. Go through a 2.0 release. And we'll talk about marketing and advertising. You've built a great app. You want people to see it and download it. Well, we need to start introducing marketing a little bit. That'll be focused on social media. So again, the class three months long, every aspect of it, if we needed to get into big, big, big detail, the class would be even longer. And notice how our class has been decreasing, although I do see you know, about 18 or of us that have really stuck it out from the beginning. Remember on day one, it was so full I had to turn people away, and now we're, we're here to the cream of the crop. So thank you for sticking with the class. We'll end right now, and I'll turn the printer back on, and I'll put my notes in the folder, and we'll have some lab time until 9.30.